stepson I raised for years, thanks me by introducing his absent mother as his only parent at his wedding and now wants my help after she stole from him. I've been married to my husband, Jasper, for 18 years now. When Jasper and I first met, he was a single father, doing his best to raise his son, Kyle all on his own. It was clear to me from the start how much he loved his son, and as I got to know them both better, I began to understand the challenges they had faced together. Jasper had been through a lot before we met, particularly in his previous relationship with Kyle's biological mother, Cece. From everything Jasper has shared with me, it's evident that their relationship was far from healthy. Cece struggled with alcoholism, which not only caused tension in their marriage but also created a toxic environment for everyone in the household, especially Kyle. The more Jasper opened up to me, the more I realized how difficult it had been for him. He told me how their relationship was filled with constant fighting, much of it stemming from her drinking. Cece would drink throughout the day, even when Kyle was at home and needed her attention. Instead of being the nurturing mother Kyle needed, she would neglect him, often failing to provide him with even the basic care, like proper meals, baths, or check on his homework. As a result, Kyle's physical and mental health began to deteriorate, which only added to Jasper's worries. Several times Jasper had come back home to find his son crying in a corner, still hungry, and his clothes looking dirty. Jasper, being the caring father he is, tried everything he could to help Cece turn things around. He urged her to seek help and be a better mother for Kyle's sake, but his pleas often fell on deaf ears. The more he tried to help, the more resistant Cece became. She would lash out at him, and their arguments would escalate to the point where Cece would scream at the top of her lungs, throw things around the house, and even make terrifying threats. One of the most disturbing things Jasper told me was that Cece would threaten to take her own life if he ever left her. It was clearly a manipulative tactic that left him feeling trapped, trying to keep the peace while also protecting Kyle from the chaos. As a result, Jasper was constantly walking on eggshells, trying to manage Cece's unpredictable behavior while also trying to be a loving and supportive father to Kyle. Eventually, things reached a breaking point when Cece crossed a line that would change everything. One day Jasper's mother had come to visit them. She was a strong, no-nonsense woman and she could see very well how much Cece neglected doing household duties and taking care of Kyle. At some point during her stay, Cece decided to steal some of Jasper's mother's jewelry. It was a desperate and reckless act, fueled by her ongoing struggles with alcoholism and perhaps her need for money to buy more alcohol. Fortunately, she was caught red-handed by Japer's mother, who confronted her. Cece tried to brush it off, blaming her alcoholism for her actions, as if stealing from someone was such a normal thing to do. However, Jasper's mother was livid, but more than that, she was deeply concerned about the impact Cece's behavior was having on her son and grandson. That night, she sat down with both Jasper and Cece for a serious conversation. She told Cece in no uncertain terms that she needed to seek help immediately. The chaos she was bringing into the household was no longer something that could be excused. Jasper's mother firmly let them know that if Cece didn't get the help she needed, she would have no choice but to call Child Protective Services on them. The well-being of her grandson was at stake, and she wasn't about to stand by and let things continue as they were. As expected, Cece grew defensive. She reacted as she always did when she felt cornered, making the same threats she had often used against Jasper during their arguments. She threatened to unalive herself and kept saying how everyone should be more patient with her since she was doing her best to quit alcohol. But Jasper's mother didn't back down. She wasn't intimidated by Cece's outbursts or her threats. Instead, she calmly but firmly told Cece that if she continued to make threats of self-harm, they would call 911. If necessary, they would have her placed on a 72-hour psychiatric hold, where she would be forced to confront her issues under professional supervision. Cece was taken aback. For the first time, she realized that her usual tactics weren't going to work. She was up against someone who wouldn't be bullied or manipulated. Faced with the reality that her behavior was no longer going to be tolerated, Cece fell silent. Later that night, I guess Cece must have realized that she had no other choice left or perhaps she just wanted to escape the mounting pressure. Whatever the reason, Cece decided she had had enough. Without any further confrontation, she quietly packed a few of her belongings. Before leaving, she scribbled a brief note, saying that she was done with both Jasper and his son. Jasper tried a lot to contact her and urged her to go with him for marriage counseling so that they could try to save their marriage for the sake of their son but Cece was done. She didn't fight for custody of Kyle during the divorce proceedings. In fact, the only thing she cared about was securing a hefty alimony payment. She signed away her parental rights without a second thought, effectively severing her ties to her son. Kyle, who had already been through so much, never even got the chance to say goodbye to his mother. One day she was there, and the next, 
she was gone, vanished from their lives without a trace. From that point on, Jasper was left to pick up the pieces and move forward with his son, determined to give Kyle the stable and loving home he deserved. As for Cece, she didn't bother staying in contact and just became nothing more than a painful memory for the both of them. By the time I met Jasper, he had already been through so much, and yet, he had managed to remain a dedicated father to Kyle. I admired his strength and resilience and felt really comfortable around him. Initially, it wasn't easy to date Jasper, particularly because of his son. Kyle was fiercely protective of his father, and it was obvious that he wasn't comfortable with the idea of sharing Jasper's attention with anyone else. Given everything he had been through with his mother, it made perfect sense. He had already lost one parent to abandonment, and I could see how deeply that fear of being left behind still lingered within him. Earning Kyle's trust became my priority, and I knew it was going to take time, patience, and a lot of love. From the beginning, I made a conscious effort to show Kyle that I wasn't going anywhere. I understood how fragile his sense of security was, and I wanted him to know that I was committed to both him and his father. Every day, I found small ways to connect with him, to show him that I cared about him just as much as I cared about Jasper. Whether it was spending time doing the things he enjoyed, helping him with his homework, cooking his favorite meals, listening to his concerns, or simply being there when he needed someone to talk to, I worked hard to build a bond with him. It was a slow process, and there were moments when it felt like I wasn't making any progress. But I kept reminding myself that Kyle's trust had been shattered before, and it was going to take time to rebuild it. Over the course of the three years that Jasper and I dated, I slowly began to see changes in Kyle. Little by little, the boy started to open up to me. The walls he had built around himself began to come down, and he started to accept me as a part of his life. It wasn't just about tolerating my presence, it was about genuinely welcoming me into the family. The turning point came when Kyle gave his blessing to Jasper's plans to propose. Knowing that Kyle supported our relationship meant everything to me. Our wedding day was one of the happiest days of my life, not just because I was marrying the man I loved, but because of the speech Kyle gave. Standing up in front of our family and friends, Kyle spoke from the heart about how grateful he was to have me in his life and how happy it made him to see his father so content. Hearing those words brought tears to my eyes because it was a testament to the journey we had all been on together. Over the years, Jasper and I have worked hard on our marriage. Our relationship is a reminder that family isn't just about blood, it's about the bonds we choose to create, the love we choose to share, and the commitment we make to one another. We've done our best to provide Kyle with the stable, loving home he deserves, and through it all, Jasper has remained the devoted father and husband I fell in love with. Raising Kyle has not been easy. While there have been many moments of joy and connection, there were also rough patches, especially during his teenage and early adult years. Those years Kyle went through a phase of intense mood swings, rebellion, and anger. It was as if all the unresolved pain and confusion from his early childhood came to the surface, and Jasper and I had to deal with it. There were multiple times when Kyle would lash out at his father, blaming him for his mother walking out of their lives, even though Jasper had done everything in his power to stop that from happening. Kyle's anger often spilled over onto me as well. He would accuse me of turning his father against him, of somehow poisoning their relationship. I had never done that and hearing those words really stung. Things escalated when Kyle started engaging in risky behaviors at school. He would sneak out in the middle of the night, stealing our car to go on joyrides with his friends when he only had a learner's license. This was extremely dangerous. Jasper and I would wake up to find the car missing, and we would call Kyle urging him to come back home immediately. He would then come back home, often smelling of alcohol. Then there were the times he got caught smoking weed at school, which eventually led to his expulsion after the second warning. But despite all these difficulties, I never gave up on Kyle. When he was expelled, I made it my mission to find him another school, one that would offer him a fresh start. I spent countless hours researching, making phone calls, and visiting schools to ensure he had the best possible environment to turn things around. It wasn't easy, but I knew Kyle deserved the opportunity to get back on track. I did my best to always be there for him in every way I could. I attended all of his parent-teacher meetings and encouraged him to get involved in after-school activities, hoping that if he found something he was passionate about, it might help him channel his energy in a positive direction. Every year without fail, I organized birthday parties for him, exactly the way he wanted, making sure he had moments of joy and normalcy with his friends, even when things were tough at home. Kyle didn't make it easy for me, though. He would talk back to me, yell at me in frustration, or try to push me away with his anger. But no matter how hurtful his words were, I always forgave him like he was my own child because, in my heart, he was. I knew that beneath all that anger was a boy who was struggling, who just needed someone to believe in him, even when he didn't believe in himself. 
There were also a few times when Kyle was caught trying to steal from me. Instead of punishing him harshly, I would sit down and talk to him, trying to understand what was really troubling him. I wanted him to know that he could trust me, that I was there to help him, not to judge or abandon him. We even sent him to therapy, hoping that a professional could help him work through the deep-seated issues that were driving his behavior. Through it all, I held on to the belief that Kyle had a golden heart, that his rebellious phase was just that, a phase. I knew that with enough love, patience, and guidance, he would eventually grow out of it and find his way. I never gave up on Kyle because I loved him, and I knew that he was worth fighting for. As the years passed, Kyle began to slowly change. The intense anger and rebelliousness that had characterized his teenage years gradually gave way to a more mature and patient demeanor. The fights with us became less frequent, and I noticed that he was starting to develop a greater sense of understanding and empathy toward those around him. It was as if he was finally becoming calmer, allowing him to see things more clearly. One day, Kyle opened up to us about his true feelings about his mother, Cece. Despite everything that had happened all those years ago, Kyle missed her and felt a deep need to understand who she was and why she had left him. He told Jasper and me that he wanted to find her and get to know her. It was a difficult conversation because while I could see how important this was to Kyle, Jasper had strong reservations about the idea. My husband remembered all too well the pain and chaos Cece had brought into their lives. He knew how easily she had abandoned Kyle without a second thought, and he feared that reconnecting with her could reopen old wounds or cause new ones. He wanted to protect Kyle from the potential disappointment and hurt that could come from trying to build a relationship with someone who had never really cared about them. However, I could see where Kyle was coming from. No matter how much he loved his father and appreciated the life we had built together, there was a part of him that needed to face the past, to seek out the answers that only his mother could provide otherwise he was always going to have unresolved issues. So, I encouraged Jasper to let Kyle make his own decision. I explained that while it was natural for him to want to shield Kyle from more pain, Kyle was old enough to make this choice and strong enough to handle the truth, whatever it might be. Reluctantly, Jasper agreed. He still had his doubts, but he trusted that Kyle needed to go through this process in order to move forward. So, in the end, Kyle set out to track down his mother. It wasn't an easy task since Cece had essentially vanished from their lives, and her relatives were hesitant to share any information. Eventually, though, Kyle's maternal grandmother took pity on him. She gave him Cece's address and phone number and encouraged him to meet her. When Kyle finally met with Cece, it was a moment that was both clarifying and painful. She wasn't the warm, loving mother he had pictured her to be. She was still an alcoholic and had gone on to marry another man and have more children with him. She was quite upfront with Kyle about the fact that she had been the one responsible for the breakdown of their family. She acknowledged her faults and the choices she had made that led to her leaving Kyle and Jasper behind. When Kyle asked her why she had never checked in on him, Cece told him frankly that he was just a reminder of her painful past and that she wanted to move on. Despite how much her answer hurt Kyle, he urged his mother to stay in touch with him. While leaving, that woman even had the audacity to ask Kyle for money to pay for her cab fare and Kyle foolishly gave in. I guess this must have shown Cece how gullible Kyle was and how she could now use him to get more money. Over the years, Kyle has continued to maintain a relationship with his mother, Cece, despite the complications and concerns that have come with it. It wasn't what Jasper or I had hoped for, especially given how Cece had treated them in the past, but Kyle's loyalty to his mother has remained strong. The only time Cece would ever agree to meet with Kyle was when she needed something, usually more money. There were even times when she would drop her other children, the ones she had after leaving Jasper, on Kyle, expecting him to babysit them for free while she would go off to do her own thing. We could see how Cece was taking advantage of him, and it hurt to watch Kyle, who had such a good heart, be manipulated in this way. However, whenever we tried to talk to Kyle about it, to make him see that his mother was using him, he would get angry. He would tell us that we had no right to interfere in his relationship with her, that it was his decision to make. Kyle was usually so calm and pleasant with us, but when it came to his mother, he was always quick to draw a line and ask us to back off. It was clear to us that this was a sensitive issue for him, and though it was difficult, we had to learn to let it go. As much as we wanted to protect Kyle, we realized that pushing too hard would only drive a wedge between us. Kyle needed to come to his own conclusions about his mother. So, with heavy hearts, Jasper and I begrudgingly stepped back and let Kyle have his relationship with Cease. In the meantime, I focused on being there for him in other ways, providing the love and support he needed. Whenever Kyle needed help asking out a girl, he would come to me for advice. When he moved to a new apartment, I helped him pack everything and even set up his new place. Every week, I made it a point to visit him and bring along groceries and home-cooked meals. Kyle hated cooking, and I knew that without a little help, 
he'd probably end up living on takeout or whatever was quick and easy. So, I filled his fridge with the meals I knew he loved, making sure he had something nutritious and tasty to come home to after a long day. It was my way of taking care of him, even from a distance, and I could tell that he appreciated it, even if he didn't always say so out loud. When it came to girl troubles or any other issues he was dealing with, Kyle knew he could always talk to me. He would sit down and open up about whatever was on his mind, and I would listen without judgment. I was proud of the trust we had built, and I cherished the fact that he felt comfortable coming to me with his problems. Even though Jasper was his father, and they had a strong bond, Kyle often chose to come to me first because he knew I'd approach things with a calm and understanding heart. A year ago, Kyle met Serena, and from the moment she entered our lives, I knew she was someone special. Serena is a kind-hearted person with a warmth that immediately made her a part of our family. I had always hoped Kyle would find someone who could bring him happiness and stability, and Serena was everything I could have wished for. Their relationship blossomed quickly, and this year, Kyle proposed to Serena. When she said yes, it felt like a new chapter was beginning for all of us. Since then, Serena and I have been deeply involved in planning their wedding to perfection. We both love spending time with each other and I've cherished every moment of working with Serena to make their special day special. Serena knew about the complexities of our family history, including the ongoing issue with Cece. She had seen the way Cece would shamelessly keep asking Kyle for money every month and the financial strain this would then cause him. After they got engaged, Serena was firm in her stance that if she and Kyle were to build a future together, they needed to put an end to the financial support Kyle had been providing to his biological mother. Serena told him that he could continue to have a relationship with Cece even without sending her money. This stance was not well received by Kyle who was always very sensitive when it came to his mother. When Serena first brought up the issue, it led to an argument between them. Kyle felt torn between his love for Serena and his sense of responsibility toward his mother. However, Serena stood her ground, making it clear that their future together was at stake and that they needed to prioritize their own needs. Eventually, Kyle came to understand Serena's perspective. For the first time in years, he stopped sending money to Cece each time she reached out. Serena also took it upon herself to speak directly with Cece. During their conversation, she firmly told Cece that Kyle was now going to get married to her and that it was time for her to stop asking for financial help from him when she already had another family. As you can guess, Cece's reaction to this new boundary was predictable. She was furious and felt betrayed. In her anger, she tried to manipulate Kyle, encouraging him to break up with Serena. She clearly saw he would no longer continue to be her cash cow if he ever married Serena. But Kyle didn't heed her advice. Two months ago, Kyle and Serena finally tied the knot. I had looked forward to this day with excitement and pride, knowing how much Kyle and Serena meant to each other. Throughout the wedding, Kyle ignored me like I didn't exist. At first, I thought it was all in my head but as the day progressed his behavior became more apparent. During the reception, when Kyle had to give a speech, he spoke about his father for raising him to be a good son and then thanked his biological mother, Cece, for being his only mother and for always being there for him. Not once did he even bother mentioning my name or how I had helped raise him all these years. More than Cece, I had been his mother all these years and had even contributed to his wedding expenses, yet I was completely snubbed. I was stunned and deeply hurt when he didn't even glance my way. As the evening progressed, Kyle went around introducing Cece as his mother to Serena's relatives and talked about how happy he was to have her with him. I understood that Cece was his biological mother, but it made me feel like he didn't really value me and my sacrifices for him were all reduced to nothing. Both Jasper and Serena shared my feelings of hurt and confusion. They had no idea that Kyle would snub me like this at his own wedding. Cece, on the other hand, seemed to relish the attention. She acted like the star of the evening, and not even once did she come to thank Jasper and me for raising Kyle for all these years. Since the wedding, I've been grappling with feelings of sadness and rejection. It's been painful to realize that despite all that I have done for Kyle, he seems to disregard my role in his life. When Kyle first reached out after the wedding, I had hoped for an apology, or at least some acknowledgement of how hurt I felt. Instead, he called to explain that Serena had talked to him about my feelings and he felt that I shouldn't be so jealous of his biological mother, Cece. I was taken aback by this interpretation. I wasn't jealous, I was hurt and disappointed by the way I had been disregarded after everything I had done for him. Kyle's next words cut deeply. He said that, at the end of the day, Cece would always be his mother and that no matter what I had done for him, I would only ever be a stepmother. Hearing this felt like a blow to the heart. It was as though all the love, care, and sacrifices I had made were being minimized and dismissed. It was an incredibly painful moment, realizing that despite all my efforts, my role in his life was being relegated to a secondary position. Hence, after this conversation, 
I decided to take a step back from the relationship to process my feelings. I needed time to come to terms with this fact. Jasper was understanding and even wanted to have a conversation with his son regarding this, but I told him that Kyle was now an adult, and if he couldn't truly value me after all these years, it was pointless to keep fighting for something that seemed one-sided. I felt deeply betrayed. I had been through hell raising Kyle since he was a little boy, helping him through his struggles, and supporting him in countless ways. It hurt that this was how my efforts were being acknowledged, by being overlooked and dismissed. It's been several weeks since Kyle and I last talked. However, yesterday he called me multiple times. I chose to ignore his calls because I still needed time away from him. But when he called for the fifth time, I decided to answer. It turns out he was in a panic because Cece, who had come to stay with him and Serena for a few days, had disappeared that morning. Along with her disappearance, two of his expensive watches and some emergency money he kept at home were also missing. He asked if I could drive with Serena and him to confront Cece, as he knew how difficult she could be and he didn't want to involve the police and get her arrested. I scoffed and realized the real reason he wasn't asking Jasper for help was that he knew his dad would yell at him for his continued relationship with Cece even after she had shown him time and time again that she didn't actually care about him. He knew I was kind and might help him, but after the way he had snubbed me, I was done babying him. I pointed out to him that I wasn't his biological mother hence he needed to man up and confront his mother all on his own if he wanted his things back. He got angry and told me I needed to get over the wedding and help him because he really needed me. I told him that he deserved this from his biological mother and ended the call. Am I the a-hole for not helping out my stepson after what he did to me? Update 1, thank you, everyone, for letting me know that I'm not at fault here. Kyle and Serena did confront Cece about the stolen money and jewelry. She admitted to stealing them but refused to return anything. When Serena threatened to call the police, Cece yelled at them for being selfish and revealed that her children needed the money. She went on to say that both Kyle and Serena needed to learn to share with her children since they were also related to Kyle, hence part of his family. Cece showed absolutely no remorse. I guess this must have finally opened Kyle's eyes to the reality of the situation. He must have realized that having Cece in his life meant supporting her and her children. He told her firmly that she was no longer allowed in their house and that he would call the cops if she ever showed up again. Cece argued that she was his mother, but Kyle yelled back that she had done nothing for him and that he was done with her. Later, Kyle called to apologize and explained everything. He has promised to come tomorrow to talk about why he ignored me at the wedding. Even though I'm still hurt and upset, I've decided to hear him out. Update 2, Kyle came over to our place and we had a talk. So it turns out that before his wedding, Cece had a talk with Kyle and insisted that he introduce her as his mother at the ceremony. She argued that it would be embarrassing if people found out she had abandoned him and that I had helped raise him, so she wanted Kyle to lie and say she'd always been part of his life, even though it wasn't true. Cece knew only me, Serena, and Jasper's family were aware of the truth however she also knew that we wouldn't embarrass Kyle by revealing it. She had demanded that Kyle agree to her wishes or she wouldn't attend the wedding. Kyle, feeling emotionally blackmailed, foolishly agreed to her demands. He admitted to us that he took full responsibility for what happened and acknowledged that he gaslighted me when I was later hurt by his decision. He said he understood if I wanted to distance myself from him, given that he was the one who ruined things. I told him that while I appreciated his honesty, I was still unsure whether to fully believe him. I've asked for some time to clear my head, and he has agreed for the time being. Update 3, since my last update 3 months ago, I've decided to forgive Kyle and move on from the incident. I've taken everyone's advice and no longer go out of my way to baby him. However, if he does need help, I assist him in whatever small way I can. Cece hasn't contacted him anymore and he and Serena are doing just fine. In other news, Jasper and I have a vacation planned for next week, and we're excited to spend some quality time together.